the opposite of addiction is connection, right? So we, Look these, you. that's a good one. The, um, these steps, what do they do? They bring us into connection. Like I make a choice for the connection because everything else doesn't make sense to me or I want to take a drink, right? Or it just, I'm so overwhelmed by whatever makes my life unmanageable. It's going to, it's going to pull me away from unity and communion, right? But I make a decision to turn my will over, over to the relationship. We talk about it all the time to turn my will over my life over to the connection that I have with God. Right. And it takes little by little, it takes a lot of practice, but, but again, it, it, it blows open the perspective of our life and, and it just helps us understand what we always say that it's, it's about a real relationship with a real person who looks back at you and who's good and who loves you and who is all powerful. Um, and he's the one who can come save you here. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey, up? I'm Father Angelus. Hi. Oh, oh I'm Father Innocent. Hey, I'm Father PT. I thought you always go last. I know, I just it's, it's, I spice it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was your thing last episode. Uh-huh. You like were very adamant about it. I know. But I changed it up. The, the TV show Family Matters? It yeah. was like one of those shows. Like, who would always would Steve go last? Whoa! What do you mean, Steve go last? Steve Urkel, Urkel. was he mean? the last one introduced because he was the most popular character? I don't remember. I feel like some sometimes it's like you have like the main stars lead, and then sometimes maybe it was Screech. I would say Screech. And then can we be honest? Screech was not the main star. But you were a Full House no. kind of guy, right? I was not. I, I think was, it was, was, was Mister Bell. I was. Can it be did anybody else think that was funny? I thought that was funny. <laughs> full House. Yeah, he's a Full House. You guys guy. are definitely Full House. Oh yeah, Whoa. twins. Whoa. You, like, mm. the you, really, you really resonated really, with the Olsen really. twins. Can I just say, was we were when we were at my sister's, the nieces and nephews are watching Full House, and oh my gosh, it's like made this full. It's like Fuller House, right? Yeah, but they were watching both versions. I love it how like things have been out for like 10 years or five years. We're like, oh, is this new? And, like, no, <laughs> no it's dude. been out for a while. Like, oh, no, no, it's been in religious life for a long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Family Matters, Growing Pains. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. That was a good one. Um, what else? <laughs> There's a whole TGIF series. Yeah. yeah. Who's the, the, the young kid? Um, Boy Meets World. Boy Meets World. Yeah. Topanga. Topanga. <laughs> Topanga came to the restaurant I used to work at, Islands. Really? Like hmm. in real life? In real life. I don't know. Her real name is not Topanga, but. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Newsflash. Topanga's not. So you know her Topanga. real name's not, not Topanga. <laughs> Wait, uh, nice job. Beautiful. Um, well, this is a good start, huh? Strong start. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things Father Angelus mentioned before the last episode we recorded was that someone made comments about we all have like, have some gray in our beards. Mm-hmm. You particularly, my friend. Yeah. Guys, it's a thing. My, my spiritual been. director asked me if, if it just coincided with particular responsibilities. And I was like, uh, heck yeah. It's nah, <laughs> when you not, be, not going anywhere. When you, uh, when you take on new, new responsibilities in life and stress and anxiety comes, you get gray. Mm. When, you, go ahead. I was going to say, when you live in wisdom and recovery mm. and freedom, no gray. I just stopped using <laughs> just for men. Like I stopped calling my beard. Like I tell it to the kids, like, whoa, 5BT, you got gray. It's like, yeah, I stopped calling. They're like, really? You call your beard? No, get out of here. <laughs> don't color my beard. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you, actually. Wow. This, I, don't, come it in, bro. Come it in. I don't know when this April, or excuse me, this episode's coming out. I think it is in May. But by then, we, we all have April birthdays. So we've all we turned do. a year ahead. See, I don't know. There, for most of my life, I mean, most of my life, it was like, how old are you? Because they thought I was like way, way younger. And then for a while, I was like in my 30s, I was still getting like, oh, like you're like 27, 28. And now people are getting like very close every time. Like, uh, oh, you look, you that. look older. You're losing it. Does, is that just me or are you guys, do you guys still, are people guessing? Because we're yeah. 37, you're 30, you will be 36. Mm-hmm. Are people like in the ballpark? They're getting more in the ballpark, yeah. I think. Is that so happening just to you too? I feel it. Yeah. No. What I do you get? Got, I still get like 20s, early 30s. You still got it, you. bro. You still got it. Hey, at least you're still <laughs> not for that long, though. I mean, this is this is gonna catch up. You might it look does. older, but at least you're still sitting on phone. Books. That's, <laughs> right, like, a, that's right. like a thing. Hey, it happens. I'm not. I'm not afraid of that. Don't be afraid. Just accept it, bro. Be Ooh. honest. Mm. Be honest. You know, just accept reality as it is. You're short. Yeah, you're five and, foot, <laughs> and you looked angry most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> we started acceptance, and then you can kind of move from there. Yeah, I pre- I'm working on it. 
I, I think it works if you work it. Mm-hmm. Let's that's keep going, a, that's keep going with the slogan. That, it works a, if you oh, work it. Hey, look, if nothing oh, yeah, changes, good. huh? Nothing changes. We printed off a list of twelve steps slogans that okay. are pretty awesome. First of all, we had to quit playing God. It didn't work. Mm. Stick with the winners. I like that one. Stick with the progress, winners. not perfection. Mm. Resentment is the drink is drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. I've heard that one. That's misery that's, is optional. Mm. That's a good one. Yeah. Where would you get all these? This is from the movement. Keep it simple. When all else fails, follow directions. I like that. I wish I, I'm going to tell that to the postulants. When all else fails, I need you just to do what I say. <laughs> Can we just give it a lot to Father Manuel? <laughs> he likes using those. You know, he's just, I like the one at the top. What other people think of you is none of your business. These are nice. good. It's good. And they're like, and that's the, one of the things about AA is like, it seems like there's a lot of space for just kind of shooting straight. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? All right, we're going to get to it. Meaning, meaning that's like how they like not that, that wasn't like a but we also need to get to it but <laughs> <laughs> I know what you meant and just to clarify Father Manuel just likes slogans okay that's what he's, I was trying yeah, to say he's, he's very creative yeah. Yeah. if nothing changes nothing changes <laughs> you know also, <laughs> when the team works the team works that was one of the subtitles of one of my book or chapters in my book I don't know if you guys know I wrote a book did you yeah <laughs> of course you did we did I'm an author we featured Father this Mark Mary on podcast. podcast mm-hmm. YouTuber did it say that or author <laughs> It's so cool. Oh, it's nice. funny. I still don't want to be you. <laughs> <laughs> There's, yeah. yeah, I don't know. We can, we have to move on, but I have a lot of fun things to say. Um, all right. Just keep First, those babies right here. <laughs> I'm going to keep, yeah, right <laughs> next right, to right, them. Right, 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 right next right. to all of my right. emotions. Right. I'm just going to keep those things <laughs> nice and very right nice. Right there. Nice and right there. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm good. Are you good? <laughs> um, I was better before you started touching me. <laughs> when Jacob and David were here, they gave me my space. Brother Lazarus never reached over and <laughs> invaded my personal space. Yeah, for the record, we've got good feedback on Brother Lazarus. Yeah, he very good. He's a champ. He's like, uh, he's like the Jordan Poole to your Clay Thompson. Hey, look, Jordan Poole could carry a team for a little bit of time. <laughs> but you need Clay. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Splash Brothers, me and you, come on. Um... <laughs> And and uh, Olsen twins, Splash, <laughs> Splash Brothers, Olsen twins. Last one. That was a good wow. one. Wow. Well, this wow. intro segment is going a lot better considering you're like, what are we talking about when we're we're actually this is kind of kind of worked. <laughs> All right. Um. So again, if you want to support the podcast, we'd be very grateful, especially for a monthly. Put us next to for your our, for our birthdays. For our birthday, it's a little birthday, birthday gift. gift. Spiritjuice.org forward slash Poco on Poco. <laughs> that wasn't like we both said, like, name your favorite animal. And it was like, ready, it was like, <laughs> hand up. <laughs> um, if you want to watch the video, you can go to Spirit Juice's YouTube channel and we'd appreciate subscriptions. Spider Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, still on, yeah, I'm still on the Olsen twins. That was a good one. I got the guy. Oh, I got. Bro, I got brother Seamus with a good one yesterday. He he. This morning he woke. Hey, you're pretty funny. That was a good one. You're pretty funny. Father Andrews is low key funny, also. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Low key. That's a, guys, not, my humor is pretty unappreciated. Not <laughs> high key. Low key. <laughs> okay. Especially when you're angry. You're you're the more angry you get, yeah. the more funny you get. Oh, I don't yeah. get angry. That's <laughs> you have a dark Mary. You do. You definitely. There's an intensity. It's whatever it is. There might be something there, but it's not anger. I'm not angry. <laughs> Bro, we'll accept it. Oh, All right, we got hungry, it. angry, lonely, tired. Bring that's, a, that's, a, that's a slogan. I know. That's why I brought it up. So uh, last week we introduced, um, uh, we're doing a three-part series, which, really? Um, <laughs> we're doing a three-part series. Maybe we'll come back to it and do a longer one because I do think there's because like a lot. Because you're impressed with my ability to command an episode? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> but hopefully what we may come back to it with somebody else maybe on the point um Oof. you know just kidding <laughs> um and then the, the last week was uh, introducing why we have i think such reverence for the 12 steps those in recovery and those um walking the steps and then uh, working the steps i think i think that's the language working the steps not walking the steps um i don't really know it works if you work it it works if you work it okay uh, are we done are you good? Yeah. Over there, motivational poster guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> spicy nugget coming back out. <laughs> um, and then what else? So this week we're getting into the first three steps. Big three. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, just a, another maybe kind of just context thing. Like we've, we've said before in the past, I think we use it on the episodes as well. Like 
and this is the recovery movement is where these, these saints come from, like hurt people, hurt people. And then there's this, you turn it around, like free people, free people. Right. Mm. And so the gift of, again, recovery, the gift of when we, we hold up people in recovery who are, who are like really being faithful to, to what these steps propose and the, the freedom they're experiencing, they almost kind of, if it's a dramatic sense, but like they almost become icons, right? You're like, whoa, like there's something happening in that person that's of God. Right. And so those kind of people free other people. Right. Um, people who are bitter, angry, uh, also, uh, hurt, that hurt people. Right. Um, so hurt people, hurt people, but just like, oh gosh, I want to be around free people. Cause it makes me free. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what, what God is doing and, and allowing us to experience redemption and freedom is he's setting us free. Right. So anyway, beautiful, beautiful con- kind of concept there. Like you were drawn to people who live this way. Um, and what is this way? It's, it's basically the Christian life, right? It's basically, basically living in reality, putting Christ at the center. Um, and then beginning to yeah, experience freedom from our struggles. So guys, the big three, the, the, um, the first three steps are the foundations of all the, the rest of the steps. And, um, and so it's just important to spend an episode on this and all of us can kind of jump in really setting the foundation of what it means to enter into healing, what it means to enter into redemption and, and begin to reorder our life, right? The catechism says that conversion is the radical reorientation of our whole lives. Well, when my life's a mess, then what do I do? Well, these three steps kind of kind of put it back in order, right? Um, uh, thinking of St. Francis, rebuild the church. Like, so, okay, the, the gift of St. Francis is he at some point recognized that God wanted to rebuild his own heart, right? So what does that mean? Well, these steps are a pretty good way to allow that rebuilding to happen, to allow the foundation of our lives, of our hearts to be set. And then everything else can be built on that. They say in the 12 steps, if you don't get these three right, you can't do the rest of the steps. You can't move on to be like, well, I want to do the moral inventory. I want to do the the piece where I tell some about the nature of my wrongs, or I want to forgive and I want to do all those things. If you don't get these three right, you can't. You don't, you don't experience a foundation or a freedom to move into those harder things, right? So anyway, it's, <clears throat> it's a, it, it, yeah, it's beautiful and clear and exciting when, when we start to recognize that these, there's a lot of wisdom in these steps and then we have to recognize what God wants to do there. So um, the first one, and again, none of these are going to be surprised to anybody, but um, we have admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives have become unmanageable um, is step one. And so if we could just say to, to make it more general, uh, I, I, in a more of a broad spirituality recovery, we have admitted we were powerless over sin in our lives and our lives have become unmanageable. Right. And, um, I don't know if anybody wants to share, but I was just thinking, I just was confronted with this question in my own, um, thoughts on this. Like when is my life unmanageable? I think we could probably talk about a whole episode on the reality of, of my sin, my struggle, my anxiety, my fear, what, uh, is in my heart and in my life that makes my life unmanageable. The first thing, and I don't have, I don't re- have a, pro- of a problem like stating it, but it's like when I was a younger friar, I just remember re- being really afraid of my superiors, really afraid of my superiors. And there was this fear that had cropped up in my heart when I was in Pashtun and Novitiate. And I, I was kind of living out of this space of fear. So I just really lacked freedom in my relationship with the brothers. I really lacked freedom on a relationship with my superiors. And it started to have a, a take a toll on me. The, this fruit, This fruit that was bearing because of this fear was this this inability to to live in a space where I was free and confident in and enjoying life, um, and so it became a real thing. And I, I remember finally uh, my spiritual director was just saying, "Hey, this guy, like could be a thing we just really needed to bring to the Lord uh, to be able to actually admit to someone else." I actually had a conversation with my superior, be like, "Hey, I'm afraid of you." You know, I don't know where this is from, and and so it went on a beautiful journey of of recognizing, but this this particular experience of fear, like had a stranglehold on me in a way. Right. And so I just thought about that this morning in preparing, just like, okay, what makes life unmanageable? Um, what sin, what struggle, what it is often is an addiction. It often is something very significant in our life that completely distracts or distorts our experience of life or distorts our experience of God. Um, so we can name the big things, but I think it would be helpful. Like what, what, what about the, the, the people who are listening who maybe don't struggle with huge things or don't struggle with major addictions or don't struggle with major mortal sin? Um, what does it mean to, to have the young kid who is a perfectionist in, in college and is just like, it's all about achieving, it's all about pursuing, it's all about like getting the good grades and proving to the world that, that, I'm, that I have to be the best, right? That, is on, that life eventually becomes un- unmanageable if I live in this particular way, right? Um, yeah, so those kinds of things, the middle class struggles, if you will, that still make life unmanageable, that still have an effect in my life. Um, I just think it's important because it's like, oh yeah, I don't drink. 
or I don't have a drinking problem. I don't have a lust problem. I don't have a, a drug problem, um, or I don't have an uh, experiencing of an eating disorder or something that the traditional movements of recovery would would focus on. And so then there's this like, well, what does then this have to do with me? Well, I think there's plenty of ways that life is unmanageable mm. um, in, in the lives of our listeners or our own lives for that matter. Look, look at Father Innocent's life completely. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's real though. Like I, we have to, we have to just be just open and honest and, and vulnerable with just our weakness, right? And I think that's a, that's a part of what we talked about last week is just accepting reality as it is that mm. there are things that make my life unmanageable, right? And I think just, if, if I could just hone in on one word, like we have to actually admit that, that we're powerless, that's, that, that um, my, like it's not okay anymore. Mm. Um, I, I think of the story I've told on here before and I still, I, I, it's the, my go-to story. Um, it's not, it's not the one about the hospital. Wait, no, are, that's not the it's one you, the uh, you mean your first sabbatical? Yeah. <laughs> You, oh, yeah. that's a new one. <laughs> wow, that's you're funny. No, it was my when I struggled with depression in high school. Like it came to a point where I like something is wrong and this is not okay. Mm. Like my life cannot go on like this. Right. So I think it's just admitting to myself that I am powerless. I cannot, I, I I can't do anything anymore. Like there's there's just something I had to had to break open. It had to break open and I had to tell my parents and I had to tell the counselor at school, I can't do this. I had to quit basketball. Like that was a huge thing in my family sports, right? Like I, I told my parents I was quitting basketball because I can't do this. I can't live life. Like it's become unmanageable. And, and so we, I just had to face, face reality that I had to admit, and this is where the freedom comes in. I have to admit something's wrong and there's something in my life. That it was de my depression and anxiety. Like it just, it was real. And I, I couldn't pretend that it was okay anymore. Right. So I just think that's a, it's a good example, but also, we just the admitting and the powerlessness we just have to come face to face with. And, and that's not just not easy at all. Absolutely. I think it's one of the rules of discernment. Y'all can help me out with this, but I think it's the 14th, but there's a part of it where like the evil one wants us to keep things secret. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he doesn't want us to bring things to the light. And so I often tell people like, Hey, if there's something in like, you're thinking you're going through and we could talk about this. I know we'll talk a little bit more yeah, about this course, next episode, yeah. but, um, but like if you're thinking about something specifically in your heart or a struggle that you have and you're like, ah, oh, I can't tell that to, if it's like a priest or if it's to somebody else, like if it's like, if I have a struggle with you, Father Anderson, on how you flick your pen all the time and it really annoys me and, uh, or like how I crush ice in class and it annoys you and then like, man, but like, you feel like I can't bring that to the person. Like, well, what is that? Because you want to keep it in the, in the, in the darkness. Mm -hmm. My Lord's about bringing it to light. I think being honest and open with the Lord, being vulnerable is yeah. something that's huge. And, and if we look at our lives, if we look at any progress that we've made, we, we've had to be honest about something. You know, I can't do this anymore. Or um, yeah, honesty just opens us up to accept the situation mm -hmm. as it is, that I can't do this. And, and it's an expression in Creole, um, but it's siu pa kapab, jesu kapab. Like if you Come can't, on. Jesus can you know what I mean? Like, and it's a, it's a simple thing. And, um, and there's just wisdom there. Like I can't do this, but it's, it's that Francesco, the, the St. Francis movement of like, okay, Lord, who are you and who am I? I realize who I am as a created being that I'm limited, but God is infinite and the possibilities are endless with him. But, but it starts first with being honest with who you are um, mm -hmm. and being honest that opens up all these possibilities to, to give these things over to the Lord, but even more so just to, to sit in that place of truth and as mm -hmm. the Lord sees it. So. Nice one. <laughs> Father Pete, he's looking like he's going to get a double double tonight. Thanks. I appreciate that. He did steal your thunder because that's the third step, but it's okay. Yeah, we'll I get mean, there. we'll get there, bro. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> just bring it up again. I did I did say we're going to get I there. Know, and kidding, so. When he's got the hot hand, give him the ball. But yeah, give him the mm -hmm. ball. All right. Good. I, I don't feel like I need to contribute. Every in your <laughs> life is, you don't have any experience of life being unmanageable. <laughs> Let me, I don't know. <laughs> I, before we move on, um, I don't know if you guys have had this experience, but I just had it last night. When you, as confessors, as, as someone we, um, when we sit with people and we, and people bring the, the, the reality of their lives, the heaviness of their lives, their sins, the sins they've been struggling for with a long time, it's really a place of powerlessness for me. And, and that, if I'm honest, that messes with me a little bit because I get done hearing the, with those experiences or praying for healing for people or whatever it might be. And I find myself in, in real poverty back before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, I hate being powerless. I hate being powerless, and so I, I feel like it's the it's the one place I go to the Lord where I'm really uncomfortable and kind of squirmish, squirmy, and is squirmy word. I like I squirm around right, yeah. in front of him because I just like mm -hmm. Lord, I don't like this. I don't know what to do with this. Like, are you? Mm -hmm. And then I get like I have this this uh, this 
doubt that kind of like, well, are you going to do anything? And this, it's been so long. And, you know, you just kind of play this game sometimes and and it's this powerlessness. And so, yeah, I'm just not comfortable with it. And, and it's, it's really hard for me to be in a place where you're just like, wow, we are very powerless before this, this struggle or this sin. Um, and it's good for you. Mm-hmm. It is good for me because what does it, what does it do? It leads me to the next step. Ooh, <laughs> huh? What's the next step? <laughs> You bet you already took it. Um, the, the second step is I came to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. Um, and so the, the first one being like, I'm powerless. I can't do it. I, I've, I've, I've had enough. I, there, something, something's wrong. Um, but then I've, I've come to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. Um, I love the word restore. Um, th- that's something, there's a restoration and redemption that happens in me. But this is when we actually get, a, get the opportunity to stop doing it on our own. Um, to stop having control, um, to stop being the center of our lives. And we get to, to because of how, how much life has become unmanageable because of my sin or my struggle, um, I'm, I'm basically defeated, right? I'm basically brought to my knees. I'm brace, basically experiencing the reality of my poverty and my inability to do anything and, and heal myself or, or, or do whatever I need to do. And then we, in that brokenness and in that littleness and that poverty, we turn to God. Right. And, and, um, all of us have had some version of that experience, I bet. Um, but this is where the gift of faith comes in. I, I turn to God and cry out to him really. And, and depending on how desperate you are, but in this desperation, like father, you just said, like, I, I don't have anywhere else to go. Right. And so we allow our hearts to, to, to be turned to God. And this is where this movement is where I, th- I think something starts to happen and a, and a confidence and a trust and a faith is born in our hearts to say, Oh God, okay, I can't do it. In a, in a Catholic worldview, this higher power obviously is, is, is God. It's, it's, it's Christ himself. Right. So it's just good to say that, but I do think the 12 steps in the movement have a, res, have a reverence and respect for people's different experience of faith. So they, they double down on the higher power, right? Mm-hmm. Because this is the whole movement that you can't do it by yourself anymore. Mm-hmm. So there's someone more powerful than you. And what's, I guess it was really beautiful is that obviously for <clears throat> Christians and priests, we know this higher power is, is Christ. And, and it's the, the invitation to enter a real relationship, right? So we say that, um, but it's, it is interesting that people go on a journey. If you've never had faith before you go on, especially when you, when you're, when you've hit rock bottom, that's also kind of a, 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 a phrase that we're all used to, but that's the image of the 12 steps as well. Um, people go on this journey of, of having to let go of themselves as their own authority, their own power, right? And this is, it really brings them to, to faith, right? Because you might not have any experience of God, but all you know is that what's wor- you can't do it by yourself. The way that I've lived up till now is not worked. So they're actually open. They're like, well, this is not working. So then I'm actually gonna make a prayer of faith, like higher power, like, like whatever you name him, right? Um, they, there's this beautiful experience of faith that they cry out maybe for the first time to, to someone, a real person who is more powerful than them. And it's just beautiful because it actually brings them to faith as Jesus comes into this place. Um, but I think it's worth saying that the, the higher power um, in, 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 in the Christian Catholic worldview is obviously Christ. And, and this is a, a great journey of faith for people. They begin to believe that this power is, is a real person that can come save them. Since I stole your thunder, I'm, not, I'm good this oh, one. Oh, you're just going to yeah, say yeah. you got to no, no, no. balance this real, one. That's real healthy. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're of uh, the 2022 NBA where mm-hmm. we like you got to take a few games off. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, you got to. Yeah. This is load management. Same, That's what's happening. Load management. Here. Do you have something to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> same age. I'm the same age as LeBron. Because I want to, I want to throw it back to him in a second in a good way. Okay. Not in like a, well, okay. just, okay. just to be honest, somehow I missed where we were last time we did this little circle around, and wow. I thought we still hadn't like begun with step one. <laughs> so, we're in step two. So, so, you with so us? I was, I was kind of like, okay, like I'm just gonna pass on my turn, so we can kind of like, get things. Would you moving. like to go back to step one? Do you have some, do you have some wisdom about step one? Because apparently steps don't mean anything. I, I, I showed that. <laughs> I think what what comes to mind is, and I hope that this is consistent, is this uh, the the experience of Saint Paul, right, in Thessalonians of. Um, my, my grace is sufficient for you for, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And, and that um, it is this paradox of, or perceived paradox of Christianity. I guess the real paradox where it's like, okay, when we're in that situation, like as a confessor, as a penitent in our own situation, where it's like, okay, I literally can't fix this. I'm like powerless before this situation. It can be in the area of like, it's my life's become unmanageable. And I've like, 
develop these patterns that I just can't change. It can just be the experience of the suffering of another that we can't make go away. Right. Um, but somehow, but somehow like this is fertile soil for the Lord to be the Lord. And this is, mm. this is, this, this, this is what he says. Like, Hey, like in these moments, like my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is actually made perfect in weakness. Like my, my strength is made perfect in your, in your poverty. And that, um, having the eyes of faith to, and if you will, like that, that clarity of vision to know like, okay, like, um, this isn't a hopeless situation. This is, uh, it's, uh, it's filled with hope because the Lord is, has come and will come and can come. And that there is a, a higher power who knows me, who loves me, who's my father, who can restore us to, to sanity, to health, to holiness and all that. Beautiful. Okay. Nice one. Just as an example, I'm just thinking of uh, maybe moms and dads who have older kids that maybe are falling away from the faith. So like their, their concern for them, their worry about them maybe has kind of taken over and it's like the, the reality of life now has become unmanageable. I'm just so concerned about my kids. <clears throat> kids are worried about them and it just become a thing, right? So, but it's just, it's just space to be like, okay, like I'm, I'm power, powerless over my kids. I, you know, I can't. Or the anxiety that it causes. Or the, yeah. Or, I mean, but no, like literally I can't make my 25 year old kid go to church. I'm powerless over that. I, I can't, you know, they're adults and I have to, and then what I feel about it is just like, okay, the anxiety, the fear, it just kind of taken over, you know? And so, but it's just like, okay, I don't have control. Right. And now, and then I, this, this really ripe space then to turn to God and to make an act of faith, but Lord, Lord, you can come and be with me in this and then turn my heart to you. And that's the movement you're looking for to recognize that I, that I don't have control and to recognize that this particular situation has become unmanageable. And now what am I going to do with that? Brother Father PT, mm -hmm. um, to, to your point earlier, like we came to, to believe a greater power than ourselves and to could restore us to sanity. But sometimes it's, it's like St. Francis, it's, I have to learn who God is right. again, right? Because right? sometimes my notion of God is really small or my, can be wounded or can be jaded. Mm -hmm. And so in this particular uh, step, you, you, we turn to God and the, 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 the encounter we have with him kind of opens up a space in us to learn about who he truly is and then what he can do for me and what he, what he can, he can be for me. And then that allows me to learn about the truth of who I am too. All right. Oh, God, right. who are you and who am I? So I think it's like this. We become fascinated with God when we make an act of faith in him. Right. When my life gets outside of my own stuff and I learn who, and I turn to God, it's like, oh gosh, look at him. Look at who he is and look mm -hmm. at how powerful he is and look at how merciful he is. Look at how good it is. And it does something to my life and my heart that kind of pulls me outside of myself. <laughs> Yeah. And even too, like those things that we experience that make our life unmanageable, if it's the perfectionism, if it's the the fear, if it's whatever it is that kind of keeps us in this place of feeling like, am I ever going to get out of this? Or just like, why is it so difficult all the time? Like once we encounter God and realize he's not those things, like it almost just opens up everything for us, right? Oh my gosh. Like, and sometimes I, sometimes I ask the question, if somebody is struggling with a particular thing, like if it's, if it's fear, like who's putting those things on you? Meaning like who is telling you you have to be perfect to your superior. Who is like, who's the, actually who literally, who's the one? I'm like, oh wait, nobody. Oh, okay. You know? And so like, God is not like, you know, wagging his finger over you and telling you all these different things. You have to be perfect in order to be my son. Like, no, <clears throat> like who's giving you that idea or like, where the pressure, where's the pressure coming from? And once we realize that, oh my gosh, like, okay. Like, honestly, I struggle with this thing and God is not that thing. Like it just opens up just a breath of life and just for us to, to walk freely just in this different direction or at least change our course to walk towards him and, and encounter this, this wonderful person who is there for me and who yeah. loves me and who accepts me. And, so. and it's the, he's the only person that can heal you. Right. You can't heal yourself. Right. The world can't heal you, right? Like God is the source of healing, mm -hmm. right? So that's if, if we want it, that's why I think it's beautiful. Like there's a greater power that can restore us to sanity. Right we want the restoration of healing and sanity in our lives. And we have turned to every which way to find it. We've turned to ourselves. We've turned to, I mean, like it, remind, it reminds me of the hemorrhaging woman. She, mm -hmm. she spends so long trying to find answers. There's no one else, right? So to this, this invitation to faith, to, to turn to, to God and say, okay, like I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like I turn to you and make an act of faith in believing and truly, truly putting myself in relationships because you are the healer. There yeah. is no one else. And I just to say, I guess, I don't know if this is like a negative way of, of experiencing who God is, but like, he's not me, you know, like, and he's not the fear that I experience. He's not. So therefore he must be greater than these things. He, he must be patient because as impatient as myself, there has to be something 
mm. who's more somebody who's more patient with me, you know. And so oh, I think of people in my life that are patient with me, but like where does that come from? So like you could deduce back, I, I think. Like there's induce and deduction. Anyway. Nice one. Nice one. Um stop. And so Thanks, professor. <laughs> and so like you could just like go work backwards. Okay, God must necessarily or this this higher power, whoever it is, like there is something out there, there's someone out there who cares for me, like in this super patient way or this super um loving way that I can have access to because I'm not these things. So well, go ahead. Oh, we just have a disordered understanding of God mm -hmm. most of the time in our sin, right? You know, because sin distorts, right? Mm -hmm. And so, when we start to open up ourselves to to the truth of who God is, it then it becomes this beautiful experience. It's like, oh gosh, like this is who God is. Mm -hmm. This is how He loves me. This is how He treats me. This is how He looks upon me, and this is how He provides for me. And that gives us a place again. I use that word, being fascinated. I can come become more and more fascinated with the truth of God mm -hmm. when I read the scriptures, when I experience Him and other people, when I start to let my heart be more fascinated with what is of God than what is of my stuff or my mess. Um, that's when we can rejoice and like, oh gosh, I, I learned now who God is, and He's not me, and He's mm -hmm. not all the things that I maybe thought He was based on my own experience of sin. All right. The third step is my favorite step. Um, and so when we admitted that we're powerless over our sin and we've came to believe a higher power, um, then we have to make a decision to turn our will and our, um, to, yeah, to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. Um, so it becomes, this is like a, a, a step of action. This is a step of surrender because uh, recognition of, of, of the first and second step is just like, I've re recognized that my life is unmanageable and now I know who to turn to, but now every day I have to make a decision. I have to use my freedom to turn my life and my will over into the care of God. Right. And so this is wonderful guys, because this is a daily step. This is actually a, as many times a day as you need to be free and to focus on the Lord. Then I, I make a decision to turn my life and my will over to care of God. So per, like, since we were practicing or since we were preparing for this, like last night I'm experience the intensity of, of just a, a real um, difficult situation with a guy in confession. And so I like, this was on my heart and I'm just like, Lord, I'm powerless over this, but you're not. And right now I just surrender my life and his life into your care. Right. And so the, there's this, there's this space to, to, to take what's on my heart and actually give it to God. Right. The, the second step is a recognition and an act of faith, but now it's like, okay, whatever is happening in me, now I entrust it to his care. And it's important they, in the, in the 12 step literature, they, it's not that I entrust my life and my will into the, the commandments of God or some, the law or, or some other things that's into his care. And there's something really beautiful about that word that God cares for me and his life, my life is manifested in numerous ways where it's a father caring for his child. Right. And so we entrust my life into his care, like his real concrete, intentional way that he blesses me and loves me and cares for me, right? So we have to understand that, that that's how God acts. God cares, you know, and, and sometimes even in the midst of something that I might not understand or something I might not be comfortable with, this is still him caring for me, right? So we, we have a good friend um, who's in the recovery movement. So whenever something would be going on in our life, she was like, okay, Lord, this is how you want to care for me today. Okay, this is difficult. This is a difficult relationship. This is a difficult circumstances. But I thank you because this is the way you're caring for me today. So I surrender to that. Really powerful and really free. Um, but it's this particular step that that is the hinge of what I've learned in step one and experienced in step two of who God is. Now I have to surrender to it. Yeah, and what's beautiful is that it does require a decision. We have to, you have to kind of step into this place, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we have a disordered understanding of feelings and emotions, right? That often can take control. And so- we don't know. We don't. We don't necessarily act as we as we should. Um, uh, the twelve step movement talks about feelings are not facts, mm -hmm. right? So when we when we struggle, um, it, it can be really difficult, right? And because we can feel deeply, and we're the emotional maybe our emotional struggles or, or emotional illnesses can 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 take over, but then we just stop there, and then we get consumed by it. But you actually have to make a daily decision, right? Like made a decision to turn my will. Wills are not. It's not your emotions. It's not your feelings. It's it's a concrete act that I'm going to make to 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 say yes to make a choice right now with all the craziness going on that God is good and He cares for me. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to surrender everything to Him, right? So the the act of the will that choice is so just so important, right? And I think what what it, what it does again another I'm just rocking the the sayings. The opposite of addiction is connection, right? So we Look these at you. That's a good one. The um these steps, what do they do? They bring us into connection. Like I make a choice for the connection because everything else doesn't make sense to me or I want to take a drink, right? Or 
It just, I'm so overwhelmed by whatever makes my life unmanageable. It's going to, it's going to pull me away from unity and communion, right? But I make a decision to turn my will over, over to the relationship. We talk about it all the time to turn my will over my life over to the connection that I have with God. Right. And it takes little by little, it takes a lot of practice, but, but again, it, it, it blows open the perspective of our life and, and it just helps us understand what we always say that it's, it's about a real relationship with a real person who looks back at you and who's good and who loves you and who is all powerful. Um, and he's the one who can come save you here. Um, just in praying through this this morning, just a little, uh, just the parable of not the parable, the miracle of the loaves, um, at least kind of just for me, fleshed it out where there's an impossible situation. Right. And, um, Jesus turns like, Hey, feed them like all these people. And it's like, well, what do you mean feed them? You know, it's like, okay, I think there's a guy with five loaves and two fish and okay, bring them. And then the Lord makes it happen, nice one, yeah. you know? And so like, you have to bring it over to him and he can make this beautiful multiplication because he cares for those who are there. I don't want to send them away hungry. You know, like I want that they're fed. And so sometimes even to like the impossible situation that we face that may feel like there's no answer. There's thousands of people, Lord, it's going to take days. You know, it's gonna take a lot of money to be able to feed them. We, we can't do this. And okay, no, just, Hey, go get that guy you saw with the five loaves and you know, yes, sir. and yeah. it's just the previous episode. Right. But just right now, like just be with me right now, like today, mm -hmm. just this moment, mm -hmm. just surrender. Because I think oftentimes like it's a big deal for us to surrender something because we just don't know what that looks like or ah, like, how am I supposed to give that up or how am I supposed to be in the, just right now in the small things you can surrender, give it to him and allow him to be caring for you in that way to, mm -hmm. to, to give you the bread and the loaves in the moment. Nice one. You seem like you had something that you were excited to say. Oh, uh, he's always excited. I forgot. That was a great point. I don't know. Okay. Feel free. The, the image that comes to mind is that of like a, you know, like a, basically like a small child who, who spills or who breaks something and they just like look to their mom or their dad and are like, help, like, can you fix it? Like, but, and, and, and why I like that it's because I think this is kind of the spirit of it is there is this, like when a child looks to their parent, you know, generally speaking, it's like they're, especially a young child. It's like this, they, there's no, um, you kind of almost have to be like, old enough to, to forget like the reality like they're so young and this experience is so true like they're they're very much in touch with their powerlessness and their limitations mm. um and in, in in a particular way like they're they're very 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 uh rooted in the reality that there is this higher power in this circumstance of, like their parents mm. who can help them and can fix them and when something happens they don't pretend like there's no temptation to think like, okay, I'm going to fix this all by myself or I can fix this all by myself. There's like this freedom of a child to just like look at mom and dad and be like, like help, you know, mm -hmm. and, help. but also, you know, um, hopefully like there's also the conviction of the goodness of the parent and that uh, they can help and they desire to help. Right. And so, so for me, that's a good image of like what we're looking at is, is to, again, to be obedient to the reality, to be rooted and to stay in this reality that, um, the the relationship of the three year old to their forty year old thirty five year old whatever parent it's like that's that's very real for us as well and we've just kind of forgotten that sometimes we think we should be grown adults who can take care of our own business but on on the most substantial and existential things uh, we are very poor and we're little and we're weak and we have things in our lives that are unmanageable. Like apart from me, you can do nothing. The Lord says, but, um, our, we have a father who loves us, who sees us and who can help. And so we just need to, um, to kind of in obedience to this reality and to, of our poverty and his goodness, like, Lord, I surrender, Lord, I need your help to make that act of, of the will. So if you summarize all these things up, um, basically there's a little piffy way to say, I, I can't, he can, and I need to let him. Right. So I always love the, just the image. And I know we're, we're getting ready to You're close good, up yeah. here. Um, Father Fred, there's a book called Father Fred and the 12 steps. A priest gives the talks on all the 12 steps and it's, it's a wonderful book. And he's a Jesuit priest. He's kind of an old man recovering yeah, himself, right? yeah, recovering himself. And he's deceased now, but it just has a beautiful kind of simple way to talk about the steps. And he talked about it, the third step, um, that he would start to use this notion that I'm going to surrender my life, my will of the care of God when he was tempted with alcohol or he wanted to drink. But then he recognized that any struggle that he had in life, um, and I might've even mentioned this many episodes ago, but like he, he found himself one night suffering significant depression and the temptation just to, to go and drink, but it was the depression that was the issue. And so he walked around his room uh, for, he said for like pretty much the entire night. And he said, Lord, um, 
I'm powerless over this depression, but you're not. And I surrender it to you. And he just kept saying that, kept saying that, Lord, I'm powerless over this depression, but you're not. And I surrender it to you. And he said, hours in, it just broke. Then he got down on his knees and, and uh, made a prayer of Thanksgiving and then went to sleep. Right. So this is the beauty of the, of these steps. This is the beauty of like getting the the first three, uh, like right and, and focusing on them and allowing that foundation to be set because we really have the foundation to, to let go of control of our life, to be honest about the reality of my sinfulness and my struggle, and, and then to surrender it to God. Right. And what happens when we surrender to God? Well, the, it becomes less. And I start to change and I start to recognize that I am not my sins. I'm not my struggles. I'm not my woundedness. And I'm not all the, the stuff and the craziness that, and the mess that makes my life unmanageable. But I start to become uh, awakened to the, just the truth of who I am in God, right? And, and the gift that he wants to bless me as my father. And say, he wants to literally come and save me from my sins, save me from what makes life unmanageable, right? And so we, we get these things right and we, we, we make that daily surrender of the acknowledgement, like, okay, Lord, I can't, in all these situations, I can't do it. It's unmanageable. Yeah, I'm powerless over it, but, but I make an act of faith in you, that you're here, that you're good, that you love me. And in this very moment, whatever it is, I surrender my life to you and my will to you and, and my plans to you and my, my need to do it, my need to control. And, and then something changes and something happens. So really powerful. And I, and I think, again, if we get these three right, it kind of sets the foundation for quote unquote recovery from whatever we need. The, the guys at the shelter will talk about these three steps, how it helped them get a life. Right, because at some point you need to stop talking about your struggles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I gotta move on, right? right. Like, it's it's the gift of freedom that yes, this is real, and it's a, actually there's a daily experience of recognizing yes, I'm powerless, he's not, and I'm gonna let him take control of my life today. But then I'm gonna go have a good time with my friends, my family. I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go pray. I'm gonna go play sports. I'm gonna I'm gonna do things that I enjoy because freedom's real, and it doesn't mean that I don't have to be vigilant and careful. But the, when you start living this way and, and the freedom you experience, you actually get a, get a life. <laughs> I love the guys talking about that. Like, I've never experienced life like this before because I'm, I'm free and I can laugh and I can enjoy things more because I live this way. I'm not afraid to admit my weakness and I know where to go with it. Mm -hmm. And God takes care of me. And so the, what your, your heart kind of wakes up to a new way of living and you get a life. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And so I, I just, I love that. Yeah. And just once again, if you can't, Jesus can at the end yeah. of the day, it's uh, give us it in Creole again. Siu pa kapab, Jesu kapab. Love it. Je Jesu kapab. Yeah. And so the reality is like, and even to just like post Easter, you know, like Jesus' hands, you know, like just imagine like him reaching out with his wounded hand to like his apostles and like just a beautiful image of these things aren't for our death, you know, like they're for life. And so if we're with Jesus, if we step into that, that grace and the glory of the resurrection, like, okay, I could give it over to you, Lord, and, and you can make this way better than I can. Mm. can Beautiful. Ever imagine. There you go. Thanks, guys. I think that was a good one. I'm going to play Nuance Police. Nuance Police. Yeah, do it. We're Ooh. all Catholic priests who believe that God has revealed himself to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We know mm -hmm. we know who the Lord is, right? Because I, I think in uh, in using some of the language of the 12 steps, we've kind yeah. of used, sometimes thrown around like a higher power, as you understand him. We He's been revealed to us. We know yeah. by faith he, who he is. But and we there's just, absolute conviction of that. Yeah. Right. Uh, unto death. Um <laughs> But at the same time, that that's just why we can, because of, if you will, using some of the language of the 12 steps or yeah. that's why that was, but I just want to make sure because it's important. People are watching <laughs> and listening, <laughs> ready to catch you. Um, well, it's good because again, this is, it, we just have a particular way of receiving this, but yeah. we're priests and this is what we believe. <laughs> I, f I want to like, create like a fancy, like the benefit of the doubts, not always in your benefit. I don't know. Cause you know, it's like a thing we're doing. <laughs> I'm like I didn't pass you the ball on that one sorry Jordan Poole do you want to no <laughs> brother Lazarus is Jordan Poole most, in, most improved do you want to mm -hmm. close us in prayer sure Father, Son, <laughs> Holy Spirit Amen Lord God we give you thanks we give you thanks to the many ways in which you reveal yourself especially through circumstances in life and we just pray that we'd be surrendered over to you to what you want to what you desire we pray for your goodness and for your love just to be poured out in a real way and that the circumstances may not change our hearts, but our hearts may always be changed and moved towards you. We ask for the intercession of Our Lady, um, all of our favorite saints and patron saints, that they would walk with us also too in our struggles, but also even more so in our joys. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 
even more so in our joys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice one. Um, you, any? Do you guys have? Do you have any friends this week? I still. I, mean, I <laughs> should just because you're just. You're just, you're just I, I should be better prepared. Holding it down, think, taking care of things. Ahead. I mean, I'll shout out the um, frontline workers still. You know, people in the hospitals. There was mm. a nice little email I got recently from a lady who was, used to be a nurse. But yeah, anyway, just nice. people who are in hospitals and working and people don't get thanked. Thank you. Is that the lady who met you on the street? Yeah. Beautiful. He had a little and, Catholic and, celebrity moment. Anna, I believe her name is. Mm. So, You know, one of our neighbors, Stephen Barnes, listens to the podcast. <laughs> Big fan. Yeah. During... Yeah. during um, Dialysis. Dialysis. Hmm. He, he all of a sudden... He's like not a little Catholic. kid. Not Catholic, but he's like a little kid. He found the brothers online and so he loves every minute of it. He might be downstairs right now. He was down there earlier today, hanging out. So God bless Stephen. We love you, Stephen. <laughs> love you, Stephen. He joined us for dinner the other night. It was fun. He commands the crowd. Yeah, it's good. Do I'm have, good, yeah, and I'm great. Um, this isn't... Because we had, we recorded in advance, right? I'm, I'm, I was talking to Ben Kelly. Ben Kelly's the TD, team director of Focus at Harvard. And him, he's, him and the boys have been doing Born of Fire. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going out there uh, to talk to their closing men's night. And I'm very much looking forward to that. Harvard, there's another Ben Kelly, Focus Ben Kelly, Baseball Ben Kelly, who's also a stud. <laughs> but uh, see you guys soon. I know I'm going to like you, so. <laughs> awesome. Cool. 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 See you next week. Okay. Oh, if you have a mug. Send a mug. If you have some So money. we can have another mug besides this one. <laughs> if you have some money, uh, spiritjuice.org forward slash Poco a Poco. We'd appreciate that, especially if you are able to give a monthly gift. And then you can always watch the videos on YouTube and um, subscribe. subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the video so you don't miss all the good stuff here. An episode. It works if you work it. It works if you work it. God bless your folly PT. God bless you too. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well. And I know 